Hi everyone, this is Audrey from TechWritingMatters.com. This is the last video in a four-part series on how to document your project using Sphinx. So in this video, we are going to push our docs onto GitHub and finally host it on the Read the Docs platform. I'm in github.com and this is the repository I created in the very first tutorial video and this is the repository that was cloned and we've been building all our documentation in this folder so far. So I haven't yet pushed anything to this repository. It still has the empty readme file here. So at this moment I'm going to do the very first push to github. So I'm going to go into the command line. I'm going to move into my repository folder. And I don't need to activate the virtual environment here because we're not going to be using Sphinx. So to push docs onto GitHub, it's just a matter of running the same three commands over and over again. And those three commands are the first one is git add. And this adds all the files to a staging area. Now a staging area is just a place where git can track changes to a file. So git add adds files to a staging area, git commit uh, commits those files for lack of a better word. And finally git push uh, pushes those files to your repository on github.com. So it's the same three commands that you'll keep running over and over again. Now there's another one that I like to use and it's called git status. So it just tells you what's going on and what, uh, the, what basically what the status of your files are. So let's run that right now. Okay, so you can see here um, there's only untracked files. Uh, git has identified three and there's nothing added to commit. So this is a good time to talk about how Git sees every file. Basically, it sees every file as one of three statuses, either tracked, and those are files that have been previously staged or committed, untracked, as in this case, uh, files that have not been staged or committed, or ignored. So if you, uh, Git ignores certain files that you explicitly tell it to ignore. We're actually gonna tell Git to ignore two of these files because the DS store file is uh, it's like an unwanted house guest. It just tags along everywhere and it doesn't do anything. It's an empty file. So I don't want it. Uh, I don't want it pushed to my repository. This is what it looks like. But if I click inside it, it's just empty. So it, it doesn't do anything. I don't want it there. And uh, the Jubler Envy is uh, my virtual environment. I definitely do not want to push that onto GitHub because I'm, I'm going to get errors. This has happened before. So the DS store and the virtual environment is what I want to tell Git to ignore and everything in the docs folder so everything within docs is what I do want to push that's where my documentation is so the first thing we're going to do is create a git ignore file to tell Git to ignore those files and the way we do that is touch space dot git ignore okay and now we can open the file right from here then dot git ignore Great, so that's open the git ignore file. Just very quickly, if you go back here, you'll notice you don't actually see the git ignore file here. It's one of those invisible files that just doesn't, you can't physically see, but it's there. So here I want to tell git which files to ignore. Okay, so I'm gonna press I to begin editing. And I'm just gonna type in a comment here. Okay, and here I'm gonna specify the file. So it was ds underscore store. And my virtual environment is in a folder titled Jubler env. So I'm going to identify that here by saying Jubler env slash. So that tells it to ignore the folder with that name. And the other thing, I made a mistake earlier when I said everything under docs had to be pushed to GitHub. Uh, I saw online that they recommended not pushing the build folder, which makes sense because our docs are actually in the source folder. So I'm going to ask a git to ignore the build folder. And I'm also going to ask git to ignore uh, the templates folder under source. So I don't actually have anything under my static folder, uh, but if you were changing, for example, the CSS of the, the theme or the read the docs theme or whichever theme you were using, if you had a CSS file here, that would come under static, uh, the static folder. So you would not want to ignore that. You'd want that going as well. But for now, these are the files that I want to ignore. So I'm going to escape out of editing mode, colon, WQ, enter to save and quit. And now I'm going to run another git status to see Okay, and as you can see, compared to uh, the previous status we ran, uh, it's ignoring the files we told it to ignore. So this is fine. This is everything that I want um, pushed onto my GitHub account. Okay, so the first command, as I said, was to add. 
uh, all these file these files to the staging area. So I'm going to do a git add space period enter. I'm just running another git status. Great. So you'll notice a change in color. So this means git has moved these files and it's now tracking any changes to them. So I'm just going to run through this and make sure this is what I wanted. And that looks about right. So now I'm ready to commit these files. Git commit and dash m to put in a message. Okay, so I just remembered something. So this is the repository and I haven't created any branches here. It's just the master branch. And, and what I've been doing on the command line is actually pushing it to master so far. So if I look at the git status, it says I'm on branch master. Uh, you normally would never be pushing something onto the master branch, especially if you're working on someone else's repository. Uh, this was a test. Um, I created this specifically for this tutorial, which is why I completely forgot about it. But basically, before doing the add commit push, you'd have to create a branch first. Uh, and I'm going to put um, a little uh, text box to show you what that command is. And then you would follow the add commit. And the push would look a little different. So let's see that. So I'm going to say git push origin and I'm saying master because I'm pushing it straight to master but you would here put in your branch name. So that's the only difference. You'd have to first create a branch then you do the add commit as, as I've shown and then the push would look a little different for you. Again, you would normally never push to master. Okay, so that looks like it completed. Let's have a look uh, on github.com and if I refresh this there, I can see uh, the message that I just did on the command line. It's brought in my files. Uh, the readme file is something I can make changes to here. It's basically going to just tell people what this is about. Uh, let me go back. You can see the git ignore file here that we added with all our files. That's great. And here are our docs. So if we go into source, this is all the documentation we created. So now the last step is really simple. We're just going to go to the Read the Docs uh, website, readthedocs.org. And I'm already logged in. If you don't uh, have an account, you'll have to create one. Okay, so this might look a little different if you have a new account, but I'm going to go to My Projects and Import a Project. I'm going to say Import Manually. Type in the repository that I want. So to get the URL, I'll go back into, I'll click the Copy button. I'll just say next. Sure. So it's doing its own stuff. Basically, what Read the Docs is going to look for is um, the configuration file, which is in your source folder. So it's going to look for that conf.py file and build the docs from there. Okay, so it's doing its stuff. I'll come back when uh, it's completed. Okay, so it's saying it completed the build and there's a link here to view docs, so I'll just click on that. Oh, excellent. So there we go. Our final documentation is now hosted on uh, Read the Docs and Read the Docs, the URL name has your, pro your repository name in it. It's got in our videos, our images, it's looking good. So great, thank you for watching this tutorial on how to generate your documentation using Sphinx. I hope it's been useful.